Hi all, a great morning to all. This is VC here. In today's class, we will discuss about diversity in the living world. In today's class, we will have the introduction about diversity in the living world. So coming to the introduction and why we have to learn the diversity in the living world is as it is part of biology and when we talk about biology, biology is the science of life forms and living processes. So what is biology? Biology is the science of life forms and living process. It defines or gives the information about various life forms and various living processes which are exhibited by the living organisms and when we talk about the living world the living world comprises an amazing diversity of living organisms so what living world comprises living world comprises an amazing diversity of living organisms our world is composed of various types of flora and fauna which makes it a diverse form and a very beautiful place early man early man could easily perceive the difference between the inanimate matter and the living organisms he was capable of perceiving the differences between inanimate matter and the living organisms very easily and he praised some inanimate matter or deified some inanimate matter like wind sea fire etc not only the inanimate matter but he also defied some animals and plants as well a common feature of all such forms of inanimate and animate object was the sense of of or fear that they evoke when we talk about what made such so this is nothing but the fear which given or which has prevailed in the early man made such started the definition or the descripting of the living organisms and societies which indulged in anthropocentric view of biology could register limited progress in biological knowledge societies which indulged in anthro anthropocentric view of biology could register they could register only a few or a little or a very limited progress in the biological knowledge as they are only concerned with the anthropocentric view so they can get only a particular amount or a few points systematic and monumental description of life forms brought in out of necessity detailed systems of identification nomenclature and classification when we talk about systematic and monumental description of life forms they brought in out of necessity they were brought in because of necessity and detailed systems of identification nomenclature and classification so because of the necessity and detailed system of identification nomenclature and classification we came to know about the systematic and monumental description of life forms and when we talk the biggest spin off such studies was the recognition of the sharing of the similarities among living organisms both horizontally and vertically due to systematic and monumental description and the detailed study of systems and identification as well as nomenclature and classification we could study the relationships and the sharing of organisms both horizontally and vertically so one can say that because of systematics and monumental description of life forms the necessity of them and the detailed study helped one to recognize the relationship and the sharing of the similarities among the living organisms both horizontally and vertically all present day living organisms are related to each other and also to all organisms that ever lived on this earth this was the revelation which humbled man and led to the cultural movements for conservation of biodiversity so what made to understand that 
the present day living organisms are related to each other and also to all organisms that ever lived on this earth because of the study of biology and learning about various life forms and different living processes man even the early man could have perceived easily the difference between inanimate and living organisms and the patterns what he used and how he praised the organisms like plants animals wind sea fire etc and all this helped the early man to make some praise towards the nature the mother earth and this description of living organisms including us the human beings started much later in the human history and some societies which worked in the point of anthropocentric view of biology could register only limited progress in the biological knowledge and due to systematic and monumental description of life forms as which are result of out of necessity detailed system of identification nomenclature and classification they could understand and recognize the sharing of similarities among living organisms both horizontally and vertically and they came to know that all present day living organisms are related to each other and also to the all organisms that ever lived on this earth and this made the man humble and led to the cultural movements for conservation of biodiversity and this is about the introduction for the living world in this chapter we will discuss about the classification of animals and plants from a taxonomic perspective thank you